is a thought experiment. I am not trying to present the following thoughts as factual. I am trying to invite you on a journey through potential ways of seeing the world. Imagine if we were to travel back in time, before all of the technology that we live with today. Now, for any society to exist, sex between men and women had to occur, and the children resulting from that sex had to be born and had to survive. The essential difference between men and women has always been that after sex, women bore all of the inescapable rep reproductive cost of that sex. Women got pregnant and women had to breastfeed. Now, societies in which men did not help women to raise children would not have survived, and so men have always had reproductive cost as well. However, the essential difference between the reproductive cost of men and women has been that women's reproductive cost and burdens has been inescapable or more difficult to escape than men's reproductive cost or burden. What I mean by this is that Abortion was life-threatening and failure to breastfeed resulted in mastitis and different hormonal imbalances that harmed the woman di directly. Whereas men had far less direct costs associated with escaping their reproductive burdens. Given such conditions, after some time, it would be natural to assume that women would start to complain. They would complain about this inequality between men and women's reproductive burdens. They would say that life is unfair to women. They would say that men are able to escape their reproductive burdens or, or costs, while women are not. Women might even have gathered in that time to try to think of ways to make sure that men could also not escape their reproductive burdens. They might even decide that they need to make sure that men cannot escape the reproductive burdens by withholding sex from men unless they promise to commit to helping them to raise all of the children resulting from the sex between men and women. They might even tell their daughters to do the same, to withhold sex from men unless such a commitment is made. They might even shame other men and women into conforming to this societal norm of withholding sex from men until a commitment by that man was made to share the reproductive cost of sex. They might essentially require reproductive rights in the form of marriage to even out the inequalities that nature placed in, in place and to give men a form of inescapable reproductive burdens to counter the inescapable reproductive burdens that were placed on women through nature. And so, I'm inviting you on a thought journey to assume for a minute that marriage may have been born in an attempt to even out inequalities between men and women. That marriage, prehistorically or in, in the past, may have been a form of equality or a form of evening out the inequality between men and women that was presented by nature. So now, let's go ahead with the thought experiment. We now have a new social order through marriage and women's reproductive burden has been justly re reduced, while men's reproductive burden has increased, making things between men and women more equal than it was before. It worked for a significant number of men and women, not all, because obviously with human diversity, it would never work for all men and women, but it worked for enough men and women 
that it over time became tradition. Because after all, tradition is simply something that our parents and, and grandparents and ancestors hand down to the next generation by saying, this worked for me, maybe it would work for you as well. So marriage became a viable option for society and it existed. Now, it was not perfect. We had problems with marriage. For example, men had the problem that they would not have known whether or not the children resulting from the marriage was his or whether or not his wife was unfaithful. And so the men would have complained about such things and society would have said to men, you choose your wife, you initiate the relationship and choose women who are modest, who are submissive and who you feel that you can trust to be faithful. And so women would have had to conform to modesty and submissiveness in order to find and secure a man. Submissiveness also came from hypergamy and the natural differences between men and women, but that is the beauty of traditional traditions because they tend to deal with many different problems at once since they have been tried in so many different situations. Women would have complained that despite having such a contract, sometimes the men decide to try to leave them. And society would have said, we will make sure that he does not leave. And even if he leaves, he would still be responsible in terms of resources or finances for the upbringing of the children resulting from your marriage. So, this worked for, for many people, not all, but it worked for some time. And time passed and society advanced and technology got better. And suddenly we got birth control and we got safer medical practices. We have a society where reproductive technology has, has advanced significantly. Women are now in control of their birthing um, experience or not. and Women can abort children and they can use birth control to decide when and when not they have children. Men and women adjust to the new reality and the new technologies and realize that marriage may not be as necessary as it was in the past because there are less children being born and people are in control of when those children are born. And so things are easier. And the burdens overall, the reproductive cost of sex overall, has significantly reduced, meaning that marriage is no longer as necessary as it once was in the past. So, we have a situation in the past where the major risk to women was that men could escape their reproductive burden. And essentially, that meant that men could lie to a woman and trick her into having sex with him by saying that he would be a protector and provider to her and then run away from his responsibilities. And what society did in response to that is that they gave women reproductive rights by saying that they as a society would ensure that men do not run away from their responsibilities, from their reproductive burdens. Then birth control came into the picture and it changed the reproductive burden or the way in which reproductive burdens are viewed. The introduction of birth control reduced or weakened the relationship between sex and having children. So let's imagine that we transition into a time and place where women can abort children safely and have readily available birth control and so essentially their reproductive burden becomes a choice rather than an obligation. Before sex uncontrollably resulted in children and since nature forced women to bear the consequences of those children, society forced men to bear the consequences as well. Now sex no longer necessarily results in, in children. And having children or not has become a choice. 
So let's discuss this idea that having children or not has become a choice. I would readily admit that things are rarely as black and white as the scenarios I'm about to highlight. But for the purpose of this thought experiment, we are going to explore two broad categories under which children could be conceived in a world where birth control exists and children are no longer the unintended consequences of sex, but rather where children have become a choice. In the first scenario, we, we would look at a case where a man and a woman both agree to conceive a child and have sex to have that child. In the second scenario, we would look at a new case which has resulted solely from the introduction of birth control. In this scenario, we have a situation where either the man or the woman did not agree, one man or not, or one woman did not agree to have children, but did agree to have sex. In this case, the man or the woman who did not agree could be tricked into conceiving a child through the partner lying to them and saying that they are using birth control when they are not. If we look at these two scenarios, I think most people would agree that in the first scenario where both people agreed to have a child, both people need to be responsible and need to have the same reproductive burdens resulting from the sex. So marriage works for this situation. Child support, in principle, works in this situation. In the second scenario, where the man or the woman has been tricked into having a child, we could both agree that the man or the woman who has been tricked does not need to carry the reproductive burden of that sex meaning that the woman should be allowed to abort the child if she does not want to have the child. So she should be able to let go of her reproductive burden of birthing a child and breastfeeding and taking care of a child. And the man should also be able to opt out of parenthood and let go of his reproductive burden. Because after all, he did not choose to have a child. He was tricked into having a child by someone who lied about birth control. So, could it be that we started out with a system of reproductive burdens that was unfair to women, and then we corrected for that imbalance through marriage? Then, we introduced new variables, creating a system where reproductive burdens are now unfair to men under certain scenarios, and therefore we have to correct for that by changing maybe a law or two within society to adjust for for these new situations which have been created. Women were once at risk of being tricked by men into sex that resulted in reproductive burdens that they would have to carry alone. But now men are at risk of being tricked into sex that could result in reproductive burdens that men have to carry despite not agreeing to such um, such burdens. In the past, there was no choice. Sex meant children. But now, sex no longer means children. And if we want to say that, as a society, we agree that people should be able to engage in sex without the reproductive burdens of children, then we have to allow this to happen with fair laws and results. And I know that we can say that the equivalent to female birth control methods should actually be a birth control pill for men, which may well be on its way to us soon. But that still leaves the problem of abortion not having a clear equivalent on the male side. So the abortion equivalent for males would probably be them opting out of parenthood. But just like abortion to some people, seems pretty evil for it being the killing of a child. Men opting out of parenthood, to me, seems pretty evil simply because you have a child which now has no, no father. And it seems, in my mind, even worse than abortion because it's a child and the child has no parent and the child exists. 
I want to end this thought experiment by asking you a question. Would it be so extreme to allow men to opt out of parenthood under the conditions that they were tricked into sleeping with someone through the use of um, someone lying about birth control? Or maybe, would it be so extreme to ask that instead of individual men being burdened with this child support um, reproductive burden, that society could instead carry the cost, for example, by letting society pay child support or letting society assist single mothers more than other mothers or something like this? I don't have all of the answers, and I'm sure that every person's answer to this question would be different. I am not necessarily saying that men have to have reproductive rights now or that the that this is a black and white situation, but I am saying that the thought is worth consideration. This is a thought experiment, and I hate when people take what you say and carry it to extremes. I'm really not trying to say anything extreme here. I just would like to know what are your thoughts on the matter. Um, I understand that it's complex, complex, but what do you think? Do men need more reproductive rights?